Hello everyone. Um, I want to apologize for being a little bit late. Um, I had some, I didn't have any technical difficulties. I had to um, reset how I had my live going. But anyway, let me know if you can hear me. If you can hear me, say yes. Hello, Bonita. How are you? Hello, Miss Pat. How are you? Um, if you can hear me, please tell me you can hear me well because um, I got some other things set up. Um, you're going to get into the beautiful connection. I got to make sure I'm on the right Wi-Fi. Okay, great. You can hear me. You can hear me. You can hear me. Hello, Latrice. Okay, Larry Live has joined the chat. Hello. Before I get started, just want to let you know that um, my live is sponsored by Badges. So if you could hit the badge and select an amount, <laughs> and I would appreciate it. Um, but this is not um, something, th it, this is something that is very dear to my heart and I'm very, um, I don't know what the word is, I'm relieved that I'm able to finally um, tell this story without feeling ashamed, without feeling um, like I'm not forgiven. Um, so everybody knows, I'm going to go ahead into the story. Um, everybody knows that Roe versus Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court. Um, if you don't know what Roe versus Wade is, it was a um, it was it was something that was passed in 1973 um, by um, Jane Roe, which is not her real name, but a female wanted to have an abortion, but in Texas, abortion was um, illegal, um, and so with Roe versus Wade they came out with guidelines and regulations that um, like the three different trimesters, um, it still wasn't like a free for all because before Roe versus Wade, people will have, millions of people were having abortions illegally um, and a lot of people were dying. Um, so Roe versus Wade brought it to light that it needs to be regulated by the state um, so that when the procedure is done, it is done legally and lives were saved because of that. Um, a lot of people have mixed emotions about it because they say, you know, my body, I'm a woman. Um, you can't tell me what to do with my body. And um, up until, I want to say 2010, I was um, pro not a, no. Like, you, you're not supposed to get an abortion. No, 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 no. That is wrong. You can't do it. I'm not saying that you should be getting an abortion um, every time um, you get pregnant, but there are circumstances where I feel like, which I'm gonna tell you about my circumstance, um, that abortion just makes sense um, in the matter. So I'm gonna go into that story and you tell me if it made sense for me to get an abortion or not, um, because it was, it was a long journey, okay? So I'm gonna go into that journey. Um, most of you know um, that I was married to um, Larry Reed, who is Larry Reed Live. Um, thank you, Sarah Miles, you bought the first badge. If you wanna buy badges to support this live, you can do that, appreciate you. All right, so getting back to my story. Um, I was married, 1998, I was married uh, to my high school sweetheart, Larry Live. And when we got married, go, let me go back further than that. We were in school together and we just laughed and we cut up, we had a good time. Um, and in vacation Bible school is when I really figured out that, hey, I like this guy. Um, and I, I guess you could say I liked him before he liked me. One of those things. Um, but that's what happened. We got married in 1998 and we started a ministry. Um, and you, anybody knows that when you start a ministry, you really start a community. Um, 
and being that we were young, I was 18, he was 19, um, that community is all the community I knew. And in 2000, and I want to say 2007, 2007, uh, we got divorced. And in my book that I'm going to be releasing by December, I'm going to go into detail about um, different griefs that I went through. And that was like the first thing that I grieved because that was all I knew. All I knew was, you know, and so when we got divorced, I was like, oh, you know, I was, it, it just caught me off guard. All my community was gone. All my friends were gone. And I was just like, um, in this, in this, I wasn't trying to be in a, in a stupor, but I got into a stupor. And in this stupor, I was, um, I was making myself get into these situations that I just did not need to be in. And one of those situations was um, being in a relationship with a married man. Now, I don't know if people call it a relationship, but it was something. <laughs> um, he was a preacher. Um, he, he was married and all these sorts of things. But all the time he would be telling me that, hey, you know, I want to marry you. Um, you would be great for me. You would make me a better person. Um, you make me whatever. It was just a whole lot of things. Within myself, I knew it was a lie. Um, but I couldn't, because I was in such a low place, I wasn't able to break away from it. And so, anybody understand? I want y'all to talk to me now because am I talking right? Have you ever been in a situation where... You wanted to get out of the situation, but because you just didn't have, you know, the wherewithal, whatever, within yourself to get out of the situation, you just stayed. Um, and so that's what I did. I stayed, and of course, um, we had to been having unprotected sex because I got married. I mean, I got pregnant. And when I found out I was pregnant, I was devastated. And I'm going to tell you how I found out because I had my girls. We went to go see um, my mama. And we we, we went to, I, I remember going buying up some clothes and going doing something. And we went to go see her. And I just wasn't feeling, I just wasn't feeling right. And I was like, oh, God, please, no. Because in my mind, I already knew. I was like, oh, please don't. And so <laughs> I went and bought a pregnancy test, pleading and praying, God, please don't let this be. Please, God, please, no, 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 no. If you didn't know how to pray this prayer, Lord, if, if, it's, if I don't be pregnant, I promise I won't never have sex again. I won't do this no more, God. Please, please, please. <laughs> I was praying so hard, and I know God was like, all right, whatever. And so, I um, thank you, the umbrella lady, True, Got me my second batch. <laughs> but anyway, so I went, I bought the pregnancy test at my, when I was with my mama's, at my mama's house. But I wasn't staying at my mama's house. So, after we visited her, I drove home. And I took the pregnancy test while my kids were asleep. Right? And... That thing said positive. I said, oh, no, 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 no. So I called, I called the guy, and I was like, hey, I said, uh, I'm pregnant. And they was like, no, that can't be right. Are you sure? And I mean, it was going off. Now, they was mad. I was, I was shocked because I'm thinking, okay, you're saying you want to be with me, faking, talking about you got a marriage license and all this kind of stuff. And now that I tell you I'm pregnant, you about to jump off a ledge. <laughs> so I'm like, mm. and so in my mind, he was like, you're not going to keep the baby, are you? I was like, oh, no. I, I, I said, oh, no, absolutely not. Um, and he was like, oh, okay, all right. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you get the, uh, I'm going to help you get the abortion. You know, just let me know how, it is, how much it is and all that kind of stuff. So... I drive my kids back 
because they were they were with their dad in the community that we had. Um, I felt it best that they would be um, there, and so I was. I drove them back, and when I came home, um, I had to go to a revival. I was a I was at another ministry at the time, so I was sitting in the car with my best friend at the time, and I was like. I got something to tell you. And she was like, what is it? And I told her, um, it's Cynthia, thank you for my badge, I appreciate it. I told her, I said, I'm pregnant. She was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I know it. And I said, I'm pregnant and I'm not keeping the baby. I, and that was my exact sentence in every, every time I talked about it, I said, I'm pregnant and I'm not keeping the baby. I had already made up in my mind. I said, I'm just, Thank you, Alfonso, for my badge. Um, I was like, I'm just, I just can't do it. And so she was like, no, don't. I said, well, he said he's going to give me half of the money. You know, half, y'all, not all of it. He was going to give me half of the money. I'm just going to do it. Um, and she was like, no, you know, don't do it. You know, that's something, you know, you shouldn't do that. You're a Christian. And all. I wasn't hearing nothing she had to say. Because in my mind, I was like, that is 18 years of having to put up with this lying, with this deceitfulness. Um, not even to mention, you know, I don't, I don't want to be in a situation where I have to be involved in this person's life for, you might as well say, the rest of my life. Because you see how I, I co-parent with my ex-husband now. I'm not the type female that is real problematic. Um, so of course I would let them see the child. Of course I, it just wasn't gonna be too much, and so I was like, mm, I just don't want to go down that road. And so she was saying, thank you, um, Miss Pat, for for my badge. So I'm just like, no, I can't do it. And she was like, you don't need. It. So she's like, you gonna tell my mom? I was like, yeah, eventually I'm gonna tell. Her. So I, because her mom was passing, so I told her. Um, I sat myself down. Um, and I set up, I didn't even have to set up an appointment. I just had to have the money. It was $500 at the time. So he gave me $250 and I had to withdraw $250. And so none of this my ex-husband knew um, until after the fact. I think I told him after the fact or during or whatever. I, don't, I can't remember. I think I told him, but he was like, I, he couldn't believe I was doing it. And so he was in another situation anyway. So uh, I think his mind was there, but it wasn't there. And so I went to the abortion clinic. Now this is what this is the part I want to take my time on, because all that other stuff really don't matter to me. Um, um, only thing that matters to me in that situation is um, I wasn't where I needed to be mentally emotionally um and it caused me to be in a place where it, it was a low place for me very low very very low place um and so i drove to the the clinic and i sat outside and i was like okay am i am i really going to do this am i really going to do it and i was like yes i'm going to do it so I went in and it was like, it was really, the feeling in that place was so weird, okay? The feeling alone um, made me feel a certain type of way, right? So w when people, I understand the strength that women have to have um, to make that decision. It's, it's not a decision that, um, and, I, and I know people probably could say that that um, the, the reason that I, that I had an abortion is really not, you know, he wasn't raped, he wasn't, y'all don't understand, that was some craziness to be connected to, and I just didn't, I just did not want to be connected to it, and I could see that it wasn't going to fit my future, and it wasn't going to be something that I'm going to be doing over and over and over again. I only had one, and I don't plan on 
And I ain't having it enough. I ain't gonna say I ain't planning on it. I ain't having it enough. I don't live my life like that no more. So anyway, um, let me get back to the... To the I know why I changed the subject because I was about to cry. <laughs> anyway, so um, I was sitting in the, in the waiting room and... Um, of course, everything's real discreet. They're not really asking you, you know, your name out loud and stuff like that. Um, so it felt really abnormal because you're going to the doctor, but you're really not going to the doctor. And so um, they had this little, this little thing that they, they pull up. She pulled a thing up. I remember how it sounds like, and she pulled it up. And she was like, you know pee in this cup, I'm going to take your pregnancy test or whatever, so I peed in the cup came back, the pregnancy test was positive still and so I'm sitting in there and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and um, she was like, okay, we got to um, give you an ultrasound to see how far along you are and I said, okay so I went to the back you know, not knowing these people, they're not really warm people either, they're like come on, get in here <laughs> that it wasn't it wasn't really no bedside manners there they just want to get stuff done and get you out of there right and so um i laid there and it kind of took me back to where um when i lost my first i had a miscarriage on my first child and when i when i laid there and it was trying to find a heartbeat and she was like um hold on let me let me um do this, you know, and she's, she did a, she swung around or whatever, she was like, okay, let me go get somebody else, and so when she went, this is a, this is my miscarriage story right here, and so it, it, these two things was like mirroring in my head at the same time, so it was like a whole bunch of like, oh my God, like, it was a deja vu moment, and so um, she, when she was searching around, my mind automatically went to that moment when I had lost my first child and um, that was I was in there by myself and when the lady said I'm sorry um, you must you must have lost your baby and I said what she said I'm sorry and she and then and that and I was in the military then, so after she said that I was like you know, and being me, trying being all strong, I'm not like that now. So if anything happened to me now, I'm gonna be a bucket of tears. <laughs> but you know, being being in the church and feeling like I had to be so strong, you know, God is He's gonna, you know, I mean, I didn't have any emotion. I just said, okay, put my clothes on, got in the car. When I sat in the car, I was like this, and then. When I got home, I attacked my ex-husband, and when Zari got, I got pregnant with Zari, but <laughs> that's how I remedied that. But anyway, get back to, okay, so I was laying on the table, this is at the abortion clinic, and she said, hmm, um, that's, that's funny. She said, I don't see anything. She said, you must be really really early because I don't see anything and they, they couldn't find a heartbeat either and this is where Roe versus Wade come in at, at the first 12 weeks they say that the state cannot tell a woman that they cannot have an abortion because the pregnancy is not viable meaning if a one week old baby was outside of my womb that it wouldn't live anywhere so, a woman should be able to say, I don't want to have a baby. So, I, I think I was probably about two or three weeks. I wasn't even, for, I think I was like two weeks. I'm, I, don't, I don't even know. But they couldn't even find, they couldn't even find. And that, in my mind, it kind of put ease in my mind because I didn't see anything on the screen. I didn't hear a heartbeat. All I knew, I was pregnant. That's all I knew. Um, so, I was like, oh, I'm going to be good. I'm going to tell you what happened. So, I was like, oh, I'm be good. Okay. So they said, because I'm so early, they gave me a pill um, to insert 
in my um hold on I gotta meet somebody to moderate right quick. Okay. In order for me to um to have the abortion, they had to give me a pill to insert up my vagina. Okay. Um I was like, okay. It was like two pills. And um and I had to sign a contract. So after um everything I was supposed to come back and let them make sure there was nothing left inside of me and all that kind of stuff like that. Um, and because of Roe versus Wade, that's, that that was in place. You know, you just couldn't just have an abortion, then don't have a checkup or nothing like that. And so I signed the paperwork. I gave them the money. Um, and they gave me the medication. And so I went home. And um, I went home. And of course, of course, the guy um, called and he was like, so did you go to the abortion clinic? Did you get what you're supposed to get and all this kind of stuff? And I said, yeah. And they was like, well, I wanna, I'm going to come and I'm going to, um, I'm going to come with you so I can be with you when you do it. In my mind, I'm thinking you want to come and make sure I'm doing it. I'm doing it, nigga. <laughs> You ain't gotta you ain't gotta worry about that. I'm doing it. But of course I was like, okay, fine, come on. I kid you not, y'all. In the midst of me doing this, he still wanted to have sex with me. I did. But that was the last time. Um and so I was like, this is crazy. And on top of that, other it's, it was just crazy how everything just aligned back. Um, <laughs> I'm doing a nigga need this bill. <laughs> it do, don't it? And so, so when I when and so everything started being aligned. Cause after that that morning, um, Reed called me. He was he was crying about something. It was something going on with, with what he was going on with the female he was with. So everything got busted up at the same time. Right. And um after that he left. He was he came to make sure I did what I was supposed to do. Um and so um when he left, he still tried to keep in contact with me, but I was done. I was I was really done and my ex-husband really helped me to really be done. Um, because he got on the phone and was like, hey, don't contact her no more you know, leave her alone. And so, um, and that was that. He didn't contact me no more. And so, um, but after that, you know, I inserted the pills. We, we had that part. I, went, I was in the military, so I was standing in formation. I was a squad leader at the time. And I was standing in formation. I started feeling like I was bleeding. And I said, you know, Cause I, it, I, I thought after I, you know, inserted the pills, I was gonna be fine. You know, that was gonna be it. I didn't know it was gonna draw out all this blood. Um, I think it was just like killing all, like the, you know, everything that, like the, everything that was inside that needed to come out. And so, I whispered to the platoon star and I said, "Hey, I said, um, I need to go." And she was like, "What are you talking about? You know, the army is." They ain't, gonna, they ain't gonna let you go just because you say you need to go. So I just spilled the beans. I said, hey, I had an abortion. I need to leave. I need to go back to the abortion clinic. Something's wrong. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, go, 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 go. You know, go ahead and go. You know, take your time, whatever. And so I left and I um I went to the abortion clinic. I said, hey, I need um I need time off because I'm bleeding so much. I can't even, I can't be at work like this. And she was, she was like, okay. So they gave me a three-day um, stay-at-home quarters. And I bled. And I bled. And when I tell you, it messed with me so much. Um, I was praying. I was reading scripture. 
I was doing everything that I knew that I could do to not lose my mind because that's what it felt like was going on. Because every time I would use the bathroom, it would be it would be like blood everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And I'd be like, oh my God, I couldn't even see the baby. So why is this so much going? Why is it so much blood? And then I started hearing in my head baby's blood. I was like, okay, this is the, this is the devil. This this is my mind taking over, trying to. It, it was a lot. And so, and I was, and I was by myself. And so I didn't have, I didn't have my community. I didn't have, um, you know, me and my ex-husband was mending things, but, but it wasn't like, like that. Um, so it was a lot. Okay. And so it was, it was like blood everywhere. I'm talking like everywhere. And so after the second day, things started clearing up and I was able to like move around but I was I was I had prayed so much that you know mentally I was good you know I, I just I, I, I prayed so my mind wouldn't slip because that's what it felt like was happening it felt like I was really going to lose my mind um because I wasn't taught that way um and you know, I was brought up, I was a pew baby. I was brought up in the church. So none of that, none of that was brought up. I, I wasn't taught that. So it, it, it was messing with me really bad. And so I visited, yes, I was in a lot of pain, a lot of pain and a lot of bleeding. And so when I went to um, visit my mom, um, I thought it would be a good idea for me to go ahead and tell her so she wouldn't hear it from anybody else. But um, anybody that know my mama, my mama is very straightforward. Well, it was rest her soul. And um, when I told her, she looked at me and she said, "You know you're a murderer, right?" I said, "Mom." So I was like, if, "Had I known that you was gonna say that, I probably wouldn't have shared this with you. You could, I could have went the rest of my life with you not even knowing that this happened." But I'm trying to, and and I was like, Mom said, so I just went back, um, and I was like, I was like, yes, ma'am. You know, I didn't even say nothing after that. I was just like, yes, ma'am. And um, after I left her, that was in my mind, and I was like, how is God going to forgive me? Because, you know, I murdered, I murdered a child that was unborn. Um, Obviously, it was wrong because I, I bled, so it was like really, like somebody said, I was hemorrhaging, really. Um, I was scared to tell anything, so I was just trapped within myself. And so, all of those years, from 2010, this was in 2010, from 2010 up until 2021, I finally forgave myself. God had already told me that uh, he forgave me. He, for, he told me he forgave me during the time I was hemorrhaging. Um, and I want to pause that because somebody said tough, tough to hear that here at that moment. Yes. And as a parent, I'm learning that sometimes um, what we say, it, it, sometimes it's, it's not warranted. Sometimes our children just want us, especially if they are older. I was out in the house then, you know, I'm not, I wasn't a, I wasn't a kid, I was an adult. Um, and when your child is coming to you for just to be a listening ear, sometimes those comments that we have, we, we can really keep it to ourselves until it's a better time. I have a saying now that, um, cause I'm a very good active listener now. I have a saying now that I say, I'm gonna put a pin in it. While somebody's talking, I pin that, I pin that, and I pin that. And I wait maybe two or three days to bring it back up where I put them pins at, to let them know that I was listening. But this is something that I wanna bring out about what you said. This is something that I want. You know what I'm saying? So I do that now versus trying to jam in my opinion when somebody's talking because 
Um, that can seem very insensitive and rude, right? All right, so scratch that. That was that was a nugget you could take. <laughs> That's what I live by. But anyway, so after telling her, I got back in a little funk. So what happened? 2021, I had to have a annual checkup. Um, I stayed going to the gynecologist. Um, to make sure you know everything is okay and because for some reason I just feel like sometimes because I had an abortion sometimes I feel like that things just may not go as it should go down there but I've been fine <laughs> I'm just it's just I think it's something that's in my in my brain that thinks that but I've been fine so this last 2021 they gave me the sheet you know that sheet that all us women fill out, right? The sheet that says how many pregnancies, termination, born, um, live birth, and miscarriage, or something like that. 2021 was the first time I did not skip over termination. So I put one, two, and one. And I took a screenshot of it. If you follow me, you probably seen it. I took a screenshot of it. Screenshot of it. And, um, and I was like, wow, this is the first time I've ever, I've ever, I used to always skip that block and just do two live and one miscarriage. But this year was the first year since 2010, I was able to be like, okay, I'm not ashamed anymore. And so, I wanted to do this live because um, you never know who has had an abortion. You never know um, what was the, what was the, um, you had a guy to ask you those questions? I would say you is not a doctor. <laughs> anyway, so my... You, you would never know who um, has had an abortion, um, why they did it. Um, really, the reason why, to me, is not important. The important thing for me right now is to let them know that it's time to forgive yourself. Um, now, I want to be clear. Now, I ain't talk about the ones that, that just that's not changing, you know. I don't feel like this is a fix for you just having unprotected sex. I don't I don't feel that way. And I just don't believe that. I feel that if you find yourself in a situation where it's not for your greater good and you know this was a slip up, I ain't been to an abortion clinic since 2010 i don't plan on going again but if it's something that you need to you know regulate and you know that and ever since then i've never been in a situation like that ever again um because i made a vow to myself i do not want to feel what i felt when i was going through that by myself i don't want to and, I, and I'm transparent with my children. I let them know, hey, you need to make sure the relationships that you are in um, are what you're supposed to be in um, because it could end up, you know, with you being pregnant or whatever. But forgiving yourself is what you have to do. Um, God forgives us. He, he's not hard on us like men men are hard on themselves he's not hard on us like that because he wants the best for us but when it comes to um us forgiving ourselves because we have been taught so many different things i would have never thought the way that i was raised i would have never thought a lisa first of all would be sleeping with a married man second of all sleeping with a preacher that is married Third of all, having an abortion. Never. 
Never. I didn't start drinking until I was 30, I want to say 38. So you know, <laughs> 38 years old. So I'm still a newbie when it comes to alcohol. Because I'm only 43. So, and somebody, by the way, really didn't believe I was 43 today. That made me feel so good. <laughs> I was at the eye doctor today. She was like, you are not 30, you are not 43. I said, yes, I am. Um, birth control is our responsibility. As men have been taught that birth control is not their responsibility. Forgive myself if the hearts. Now, I feel like um, there should be some regulation on men, too, because... Why was this man, um, and you're married, you having sex with, with me, and you don't have on protection? And so, I feel like men need to be regulated too. But of course, they're going to say, we're the one that give birth, so it's best to just control how it happens with us than with the man. Because without us, they can't, you know. But it's without either one. That's how I feel. So, I heard people say that he'd be giving out vasectomies just like they're giving out abortions. <laughs> but, you know that's never going to happen. So, I'm just up here to tell us, we as women, we need to figure out who we are. Um, don't settle for what you don't want. Um, and get yourself whole enough so that what you want is what you need. Um, when I was in a situation I was in, I wasn't whole, I was broken. I was broken, broken, broken. I, I was broken into many pieces. And that's the only way that person was able to step into my life. Because had I been what I was, I wouldn't even look his way. And that's how it is today. I don't really... And a lot of people be like, oh, I know your inbox is blown. No, people don't talk to me like that. Because I don't carry myself in that way. To where if I'm talking to you, that means I have, I see potential in you. But if I'm not talking to, and if I'm not talking to, <laughs> um, most times it's clear that, you know, I don't fool around like that. Um, and that is because of the vow that I made myself in 2010. I'm not going to be fooling up with no more mess. And then I got broken again in 2017. And we all saw what kind of mess I ended up in again, right? <laughs> That's another lie for another day. <laughs> You're not alone. I myself growing up putting the cost of thought I'd be an unwed teen mom. But here I am. We all have a story. Yes. So, you know, just just heal. Make sure you are you are in a, a whole place when you're trying to get into a relationship. And you won't even see, you won't even get in. When you're a whole, you don't even get into relationships that you don't need. I'm a witness to that. When I'm doing what I need to do, when I'm praying like I need to pray, um, I'll be looking. I thought I'd be a team mom. Wow. But I think we need weekly talks with the least as people can DM you questions or topics. You have such a common aura. I've been told that so much. I think so too. I'm going to start coming live more. I think I said it. Um, I'm going to leave this live up. Um, if you have any topics or any questions like um, aroma... Thera Bree said, make sure you inbox me. Um, and I'll come live and we'll talk about it. Because I'm very transparent. I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to be something I'm not. And I'm not going to give you answers that I don't, haven't already. I've been experienced a lot. And this is just scratching the surface for, for what I've been through. And I have a book coming out in December. It's going to be talking about all the different griefs that I've been through. And this is one of them. So in the book, it is going to really go into detail about, um, without saying any names, um, but it's going to go into really detail, go into full detail on what and how I felt during that time.
okay? But, yes, I will. I'll come back another time and talk about my other mishap that was in 2017. <laughs> but after that, I promise you, no more. I'm, I'm not going through none of that no more. None of that, none of that. Okay? So, my takeaway, I just want, again, those of us um, that have had an abortion and you feel like that you have to be ashamed, you don't have to be. Okay? You don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to... Um, but it is, it is a journey, though. It is a journey. It's a journey that you have you have to take on your own. And when you start taking that journey, um, because the child that I would have had, I believe, would have been 12 years old um, if I would have kept the baby. It would have been 12. And the child that I miscarried would have been 18. And my mind wonders, would it have been a boy? Because I always wanted a boy. I think I would be such a great boy mom. Um, but I didn't have a boy. I have two girls that really just... <sighs> girls are... They're the business. <laughs> they're the business. But you know what? I think it's because the emotions. And we just... But anyway... I have much, much more to say, and I will say it. Just inbox me what you think we should talk about. And, um, yes, into resilience that she keep up with ages too. Yes. I, I just recently thought about that one. But the other one, I think, the one before it, Zari, I think about often. <sighs> so, but anyway, we did this without crying. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Because it was getting, I had to turn it when I was talking about going to the place. Did y'all see that? <laughs> I had to turn it because I was about to be up here. Whoo, God, that was, whoo, it was hard. But I thank you guys for joining in. And when I go live again, I'm going to take your topics, I'm going to take your questions, and we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to give it to Aroma um, Therapy Bree, and she's going to tell me the um thank you she's gonna tell me the questions and then we'll do it live how about that all right this live will be up and i'm gonna i'm gonna go now so y'all have a great evening i was way younger when i had one yes you must share do you want to come on and share right quick before i leave oh do you want to share that's the question and that's another thing. Anybody else want to share before I leave? Because um, I think everybody's, um, I think everybody, everybody can benefit from anybody. All right, so I don't know how to really operate. Um, so next time, next time. But just know I'm praying for you. And you continue to pray for me. And uh, <laughs> Miss Beth said, no, I look a mess. I look a mess too. Oh, God. But <laughs> I love you guys. And I will come live again next week sometime. Okay? I'm going to leave it up, Camille. Nice to see you. <laughs>